So this is the 10 minute video I promised for the 170A class. And the thing I want to talk about is how to store the permutation matrix P uh, for the LU decomposition. So remember, if we had something like uh, 3, 2, 1, 6, 8, 4, negative 3, 10, 6, then this decomposes as L equals uh, 1, 0, 0, negative 1 half, 1, 0, 1 half, negative 1 seventh, 0, or sorry, 1, U is 6, 8, 4, 0, 14, 8, 0, 0, 1 seventh, and the permutation matrix P was uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. And this represents, when we did the Gaussian elimination to find the LU decomposition, this P represents the row exchanges we had to do in order to do partial pivoting. So, where, so that's where we put the... Uh, the largest number in the pivot position, the largest available number. And using these, if this matrix is A, we have PA equals LU. Now, the problem is, storing P is silly. So first of all, we already talked about, if we have L and U, the information that in them can just be stored in A, and so we only need to store one matrix instead of two. But if we have P, now it seems like we still have to store two matrices, and for large matrices that can be a lot of memory. Uh, plus, using this matrix P is slow. So there's several ways to, uh, to store this. The one I'll talk about is a, a fairly easy one. So the way to do it is like this. You start Gaussian elimination with a vector 1, 2, 3, all the way through n. So, you know, if your matrix is n by n, you start with the vector 1, 2, 3 through n. Uh, now, what you do is whenever you exchange rows, you exchange those numbers, uh, not, those, not necessarily those numbers, but those entries in this vector. What I mean by you exchange the, the entries rather than the rows is that a row, uh, or sorry, the, instead of changing the numbers, if you change the numbers, the numbers might already be switched. So you don't want to change the numbers. You want to change the you know third entry with the fifth entry if you change the third row with the fifth row when you're doing Gaussian elimination. So if you do this, when you're done with Gaussian elimination, uh, this me uh, vector P will say which original row should go into uh, which positions. So for, from our earlier example, uh, where we did this, this one, we, we would start out with a vector 1, 2, 3, and the first row exchange we did during this elimination, well, uh, we switched the first and the second rows. So we would switch 2 and 1, the first and second position. Then we uh, switched the second and the third row. So we switch the second and the third row, so we switch these numbers and we get two, three, one. And so this is how we can store our P. Notice that two, three, one tells us, one way to think about it is it tells us where the one is in the permutation matrix. The second row, or sorry, second column, the third column, and the first column in that order. But it's a vector instead of a matrix, and so you're saving a lot of storage room. So if this was your uh, your matrix, or sorry, your well, your vector P, if we were solving 
AX equals B, and say B was B1, B2, B3, what we're going to do is we're going to really solve LUX equals, and then we want to put them in the same order we used here, so B2, B3, B1. And there will be a homework problem about this. Uh, but this is the basic idea. Rather than storing it as a full matrix, you can store it as a vector and save a lot of room. Now, there are other ways to do this, but this is a particularly simple way that still saves quite a lot of room. And that's it uh, for this lecture.